Okay, now we are in our step 12, configuring OSPF with authentication in distribution switch 1, distribution switch 2, and in core 1 and core 2 switches. But block unnecessary neighborship in the distribution switches. We'll discuss about blocking unnecessary neighborship when we'll configure that, but let's now configure the OSPF in distribution switch 1 and 2 first. Okay, for the distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2, we have to advertise all the VLAN network, the 5 VLAN network, VLAN 10 20 30 40 and 50 and for both of the switches the two uplinks so for distribution switch one that would be the layer 3 the channel 2 which is 2.2.2.0 and this link that is diagonally connected to core switches 2 which is 15.1.15.48 for the 2.2.2.0 we are using slash 24 mask and for slash 24 mask the submit mask is 255 255 255 0 and the wildcard mask will be the opposite which is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255 for the slash 29 mask will be 255 255 255 248 and the wildcard mask will be the opposite which is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.7 this is a quick pick of the script of distribution switch 1 we have to first enable the routing and then router OSPF1, the uplinks, the two uplinks first, network 2.2.2.0, this is the subnet mask and area 0, we are using the area 0 here, for network 15, 1, 15 48, which is connecting to this core switch 2, 15.1.15.48, we have to call the network ID, and 15.1, 15.55 will be the broadcast ID, we don't need that, and here are the 5 VLAN network, 10.2.2.0, 10.10.0 they are they all are slash 24 mask i think i had a mistake here that would be 255 so for villain 10 that would be 10 10 10 0 0, .0, .0, .0 255 area 0 same for villain 20 30 40 and 50 and for distribution switch 2 pretty much the same configuration ip routing we are enabling the routing router ospf1 now first the two uplinks first one is 3.3.3.0 slash 24 mask and then the wildcard mask area 0 that 3 dot network is here connecting to the core switch 2 the layer 3 ether channel 2 and the other link should be connecting to the core switch 1 diagonally and the network ID will be 10.1.10.48 and that is a slash 29 mask that is the exact thing been written here this is the wildcard mask for the slash 29 mask and these are the five VLANs they all are in area 0 so let's do it first I will enable the routing now all VLANs And I can save it now. Do show IP OSP route. This is the router process ID for the OSPF. We know the highest IP address will be the process ID. So if there is any loopback ID, by default it will take the loopback ID, but I do not have configured any loopback ID in the distribution switch one. So the switch by default took the highest IP address, which is 50 50 50 dot one. Now I'll go to the distribution switch 2 and do the same. For distribution switch 2 again, this two link, the layer 3, the channel 2, that has 3.3.3.0 slash 24. And then this redundant diagonal link connecting to the core switch 1, that has 10.1.10.48. With slash 29 mask and then all the five VLANs network
similar output here as well to show IP route. The 50.50.52 has been selected as the process ID for the router OSPF area backbone 0 because I have selected the area 0 and these are the route you can see. Let's see the most important thing if we have made the neighborship yet. I mean the distribution switch 1 do show IP OS neighbor. If we notice we have similar output in distribution switch 2 and distribution switch 1 there is only VLAN 50. The reason the neighborship did not show up yet because there is nothing to build up with distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2. They are connected by the layer 2 with the channel. This is a layer 2 with a channel. There is no IP connection here. In order to see the uh, neighborship I have to deploy the WSPF in core switch 1 and core switch 2 and then we would be able to see the neighborship with 3.3.3.0 network for distribution switch 2 and for 10.10.1048 so let's go ahead and deploy the OSPF in core switch 1 and core switch 2 so for core switch 1 and core switch 2 I have to deploy total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 network that means 10.1.10.32 10.1.10.40 the layer 3 ether channel 1 which is 1.1.1.0 then 10.1.10.48 and then 2.2.2.0 network I do not have to deploy the VLAN network here in core switch 1 or 2 because distribution switch has all that routing information the VLAN routing information inside its own OSPF table and by default we know that OSPF shares its database with its neighbor so it will share the VLAN network information to the core switch 1 it will sync them OSPF will sync the neighborship so let's deploy it this is a slash 24 mask so the wildcat mask will be 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255 here this is a slash 29 mask so we know that it will be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.7 so now we have our five networks in the OSPF routing table for course switch 1 1 2 3 4 5 if you notice we have started to get the adjacency message we'll save it then we'll go to the course switch 2 we'll do the identical configuration here as well This is the network ID 15.1.15.32 and then we'll use this one 15.1.15.40 and then again 1.1.1.0 then 15.1.15.48 connecting to the distribution switch 1 and then this layer 3 ether channel 2 in total 5 networks. okay it's done so we have 2 slash 24 mask and 3 slash 29 mask here as well and course switch 1 as well this one and this one let's see if we have the neighborship formed yet okay if I go to my distribution switch 1 if you notice I have formed the neighborship distribution switch 1 has all the VLAN network here and then 15.1.15.49 which is this network and then 2.2.2.1 which is this network connecting to the core switch 1 
if I go to the distribution switch to all the VLAN networks again and this is the port channel 2 which is 3.3.3.1 connecting to the core switch 2 and then I have 10 1 10 49 I guess this is connecting to core, uh, core switch 1 diagonally this one fantastic if I go to the core switch 1 I have 2.2.2.2 which is distribution switch 1 the L3 ether channel 2 network and then 10 1 10 50 which is this network connecting to the distribution switch to 1050 and then 1112 which is the layer 3 ether channel connecting to the core switch 2 so I have three network here obviously I'm not going to see the AST clustering here this network here because I have not configured the OSPF in in the ASS yet also there is two things that I mentioned we have to block unnecessary neighborship in the distribution switch 1 and 2 and we also talked about OSPF authentication so the authentication is already done if I go back to our state if you notice this is core switch 1 we have enabled the interface authentication for OSPF in both core switch 1 and core switch 2 also in distribution switch 1 this is distribution switch 1 and we are in our step 1 like in the beginning we have done that interface authentication for OSPF in both distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 here with the IP OSPF authentication message digest IP OS message digest key 1 MD5 is the hashing mechanism and the password is Cisco and the key is 1 so we have finished the authentication process now we have to block unnecessary neighborship let's do it I'm in the distribution switch 1 and we have to just deploy these into distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 only the reason why we are doing it because uh, OSPF is a very heavy routing process heavy means it uses a lot of system resources like in the router or switch that is running the OSPF it uses a lot of system memory like RAM so we don't want to pressurize it you know we are trying to remove some of the redundant network that it has the reason I'm saying redundant because if I go back to distribution switch 1 and if I say do show IP route you see this networks 10 20 30 40 50 is already there in the distribution switch 1 this is how the routing is here inter VLAN routing so the distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 has already the VLAN networks in it they don't need a further dynamic routing protocol like OSPF to show the routing path for all the VLAN network so I am going to block that neighborship we don't need that so that the device get free it should have some free memory inside it if we remove that VLAN networks from both distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 the routing should not have any problem it will still be fully functional without any routing damage and most importantly we don't need that for the distribution switch 1 and 2 the distribution switch 2 needs only two neighborship one that is connecting to core switch 1 by the layer 3 the channel 2 and this one diagonally connecting to core switch 2 so we only need these two neighborship we need one but we are using it as a redundant link so it has already a redundant link we, we don't need anything else and these are all downlinks they are interconnected to each other so the commands are pretty simple what I'm going to say is router OSPF 1 and the first command I'll initiate that is passive interface default hold on hold on did you see that all neighborship is breaking now and why the neighborship is breaking because I'm saying this distribution switch to that whatever interface you have how many interface you have I don't care but do not build any neighborship with any of these interfaces that has a network period do not build any neighborship now what I'm going to say is no passive interface PO2 that means now I'm saying this is ether channel PO2 that means port channel 2 build the neighborship with this one only but no one else just make friendship with this interface whatever network you have in this interface I'm going to say that one more time no passive interface it 0 slash 2 all right what I have said to that device is that hey I see that you have a lot of interface do not build any neighborship with any of your interface but just the interface 
that has ether channel 2 which is it 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 that has 2 dot 2 dot 2 dot 0 network and then it 0 slash 2 that has 15 1 15 48 network i'm going to repeat the same commands for distribution switch 2 if you notice all the neighborship is broke the moment i say it passive interface default we can also verify that if i say show ipos neighbor yeah there is no vlan network anymore all vlan network is gone but i will say that passive interface default the moment i say that you notice that these two network has broken too if i say it again do show ipos neighbor there is no neighborship you see moment earlier we had this two neighborship now we don't have it anymore because i asked the device to block all the neighborship now i'm going to say router was one passive interface default no passive interface po2 and e zero slash two right yeah now you will notice now you'll be seeing that this neighborship is coming back and i should have only two network in my ospf database routing table so do show ip os neighbor as expected you notice i have 10 1 10 49 which is this one and this one only and distribution switch one should have the similar output show ip os neighbor 15 1 15 49 which is this one and 2.2.2.1 dot, two dot, two dot which is this one but the passive interface is not affecting our core switch 1 and 2 as soon as we have the neighborship formed in distribution switch 2 and 1 the neighborship also come back for core switch 1 and core switch 2 so if you notice we have the full neighborship between these three network in core switch 2 and core switch 1 so there are two things that i need to mention here so i have made the passive interface for all the vlan networks connected to distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 that is the reason i don't have to go to every vlan interface and deploy the authentication mechanism this mechanism ipos authentication message digest ipos message digest key md5 cisco i don't have to do that because i'm not using this vlan network in the ospf database routing table but if i don't say that i need to go to every vlan interface and deploy them the way we have done it here interface range gig 0 slash 2 gig 0 slash 4 and 5 we have to say interface range vlan 1 2 3 4 5 and the second important thing i need to mention that why we are using the authentication mechanism here for ospf in production network you don't want anybody come to your network and get into your network right so that is the reason you should use the authentication mechanism that is how the production network runs so anyone who wants access to your network they should have that information the hashing mechanism which is md5 the key which is we have given one and the password is cisco they need all this information to get into your network otherwise if you want you can create a guest user like we do for our wi-fi configuration they can connect to your network as a guest but in order to in order to get into the corporate network which is this one they must need this thank you